Hey guys, good morning. So I am making the sweet potato chili from the Mail Mentor app this morning. It's seven in the morning. I'm actually putting this in my pressure cooker and then I'm gonna get ready and go to work. But I thought that might be inspiring to you guys because I know a lot of you have to make stuff in the morning or prep in the morning or you're always just trying to squeeze in more time and so this is what I'm doing. And also um, I wanted to try it in my pressure cooker to see if that works. I think it will. Um, and so you can see that option, but it is the, Oh, I don't know if my phone's going to show up on the camera, but it's the sweet potato chili from the meal plan in this week's Meal Mentor app, and this is a favorite. My husband actually requested it. He mentioned it last night, and then this morning, he's like, did you end up making that sweet potato chili? And I was like, okay, I'll make the sweet potato chili before I leave for work. It's cool. It's gotcha. Gotcha covered. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started because I don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to open it up in my app. I love it in the app. Yay! Okay. So, as you guys know from all my previous cooking videos, I rely very heavily on my little assistant here to help me out with things like onions and garlic. So, I'm going to start with that. And for those of you who are just tuning in, I am making sweet potato chili before work, and I'm going to do it in my pressure cooker. All right. So one way to kind of get this party started is I'm going to put my pressure cooker on sort of warm it up so it's ready for me when I when I want it. And I'm just using broth today instead of water because I have a whole bunch. I bought like a big pallet on sale and so I'm using up all the broth. Okay, well, I'm going to add one more. You guys know me, I love to add garlic, so garlic, garlic, garlic. Okay, and using my mini food processor makes everything so fast and easy. See, like, you just can't beat that. That's so fast. I also, the recipe doesn't call for red onion, but it's what I had already used up, so I'm just going to go with a red onion. And because it's so gigantic, I think I'm going to start with just half and see how much that is, because my husband doesn't like things to be too oniony, so let's see. Yay! I mean, there's no way I could chop that perfectly or that fast. That's why I love this thing. I really, I don't make any money pushing the little mini food processor. I just love it this much because it makes my life so much easier. And then all I have to do is a quick little rinse when I'm done. Oh my God, it's so easy. I do need, and then I use these little spatula things to kind of clean it out. All right. I don't know if you can hear, my pressure cooker is already starting to warm up a little bit. I don't like the Instant Pot. I know a lot of you love it, but I like the old school Cuisinart one. It's like 100 bucks. This is actually my third one because I use it so much that I literally burn through them or I end up giving them away. I gave one to my sister. I gave one to my friend um, when, I, when I was moving. And so, but anyway, checking that out. I could definitely use some more onions, so I'm glad I checked. And that's a great thing about when you cook for yourself is you can really decide exactly how you want it versus being stuck with however somebody else wants it. I think that was about 11 pulses. I know a couple of you have asked me that. Look at that. Perfect. So perfect. Couldn't do it better myself. Would love to, but being a perfectionist, I know I will never get it like the Cuisinart, so... All right, so now that I have these guys in here, and I'm just gonna let them saute. My pressure cooker has a saute setting. Um, I think most do that are electric, they have this saute setting, so I just have mine on saute. I will put the top on, just to lightly cover it. Um, mostly, I feel it makes it cook faster. I'm at high altitude, so the faster of any kind is better. And so, like I said, I'll just rinse this out when I'm done. So I'm going to put this away in my sink. Come back. And I'll need this to quickly 
clean off my cutting board. Alrighty, so, and the nice thing about the app is I can check off that I've already done that. Like I've already started with the onion and garlic and so I know that okay that's done it's really nice for me to be able to check it off and when we get into the cooking the steps which I can do now like um, you know line with water which I did with broth saute onion and garlic doing that right now so I check it off and I'll just put my phone down and if I forget because I always do I can see right where I am and so I know now I need to do my bell pepper I'm using a green one anyone would do I just happen to like green in my chilies and I could do this in my little cuisinart too, but I actually really like chopping a bell pepper, so I'm gonna do it myself. And I posted yesterday about the knives I use because I've been getting a lot of questions. If you wanna buy a Christmas gift, this is the inexpensive one. And one I usually grab a lot of the time because it's lighter and not as heavy. Um, being a female and just in general, the heavier ones sometimes are overwhelming to me whereas this one's nice and light and does a really great job. Oh, and Tay is at my feet. Tay Tay! Bell peppers are his favorite food. He loves to eat them. Loves, 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 loves bell peppers. I've never met a dog so obsessed with uh, a vegetable like this. So I'm just putting these in here as, like, as I chop them up. All right. There's a hundred different ways, I think, to do a bell pepper. I've tried a lot, but this way is still my favorite. If there's another way that you like better, that's totally fine. Um, I know some people kind of scoop out the center and make a long ribbon, and that works. It's just that it's not as comfortable for me. So I do what's comfortable for me, even if it's maybe not the most efficient. I've cut myself so many times with knives. Um, I'm actually healing a wound right now. I don't know if you can see it from you know trying to do it a different way, trying to be a perfectionist, and so now I'm just kinda like whatever. I did notice my store actually sold diced bell peppers. They were pretty expensive, but it was nice to know that in really, really crazy weeks, I could have done that too to make it just a little bit easier on myself. Because sometimes it's worth paying that extra dollar if it means you're actually gonna eat a delicious home-cooked meal. I definitely use those shortcuts all the time, as you guys have seen in my videos before. Alrighty, so I'm just finished chopping this up. And I've done a million prep videos if you want to really see sort of my techniques. I'm not specially trained, I'm just a home cook like you, and this is what I do. Alright, so there's all my beautiful bell peppers. And I'm going to throw them, oh, see, I don't know if can you see, it's really going now. Super amazing. Okay, go in. Oh, that's a big piece. These in. And like I said, you can do any bell pepper here that you like. I know some people really like the red ones, so that's fine. I get to check that one off my app. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Um, and now on to my sweet potato, which is weirdly shaped and gigantic, but I'll make it work. Bye, Tay Tay. You guys have to see this. This is my life. This is where he stands in between my legs. We, uh, he trips me all the time and we call it the, uh, the Tay Shuffle. So, hi buddy. Yeah, there he is. Tay Tay. All right. Oh, got stuck in the cabinet. Okay. Oh, I can do it. I did it. Same with, um, uh, how I dice my sweet potatoes, it's different for everyone. I like to cut these like almost like a little steak and then d do the grid, like the checkers grid for cutting it because I like a uniform cube. But I know some people like to cut it different or cut like the triangular kind of shape where you sort of go down the middle and then just down, you know, whatever works. Whatever your family likes, whatever you like. I don't do my pieces too, too big, and I also don't put in these little ends because my husband really hates them, whereas these little ends, the little points, um, I just save it for my broth. So I'm going to throw all these in here, these in here. And I'll show you a shape in a second. So here's, 
here's about what mine looks like. Um, it, it actually kind of reminds me of like cheese diced, but that's, it's about, it's literally the size of a Vegas dice cube. So that's what I do. And the bigger it is, the longer it takes to cook, the smaller it is, the faster it is. So if you're doing the stove top, you might want to do smaller. If you're doing it like this, you probably want to do it bigger so it's not too smushed and it's like overcooked and overly soft. Although you might like that, you know, some of us like a really soft potato. It's all about personal preference. That's the best part of cooking at home, in my opinion. Let's see. I'm just doing a quick check to make sure nothing's too big. So I want it to cook uniformly. And that center part of the potato is really quite large. Okay. And you notice I didn't peel my sweet potato, partly because I'm lazy and it's seven in the morning, but otherwise also because I know that's where a lot of the nutrients are and when you're cooking it, it just doesn't have that mouth feel that like a baked potato might. All right. So all my potatoes are in there. Let's see what's next in my directions. I need to add my spices. Alrighty, so I have my handy little spicy thing here. Oh, you know what? I didn't pre grab my cumin, or coke powder. All right, let's see what I need. It's so handy to just scroll right back up and see. And I can check these off too, which is helpful. Cinnamon is an optional ingredient in this, which I know sounds super weird, but you gotta trust me on it, and it really works here. And also my husband loves anything with cinnamon, so it's a must for what I'm cooking for him. And now I gotta do my cumin. Do you guys say cumin or cumin? I never can decide on that. What is it? Um, if you're watching right now, let me know what you think. Is it cumin or cumin? I just, I'm always trying to figure that one out. Also, I think it smells like, um, Bio. Put that out there. Alrighty. And you'll notice that sometimes I do like a, like a heaping on my measurement because I like things to be really strong in flavor. And so that's definitely something you can do if you feel the same way. You know, it's not like a massive heap. It's not like a mound. You know, like that's that's a, that's a lot. It's more like it's just not perfectly flat. You know, more or less of a spice usually won't make or break a dish unless it's a hot spice like ginger or cayenne, in which case definitely error on the side of less. Um, chili powder, which looks like I'm going to need more of that. Hopefully I'll have enough. Yes, almost exactly. So that's exciting. And so I can check all these off now. Yay. Oh my gosh, it already smells so good. And then I need to add my tomatoes, and then I'm going to actually pressure cook it. So that's exciting. Oh, quick note. So if you are doing it in the pressure cooker like me, you don't want to add your beans. So the recipe calls for two kinds of beans, kidney or black, or both kidney or both black, whatever, it's two cans of beans. And um, you don't want to do that in the pressure cooker. You want to add it when you're done. And same thing, if you decide to slow cook this, because you could, you could slow cook this as well. You'll probably want to add another cup of water, though. Um, if you slow cook it all day at work, just add the beans when you get home and let it warm real quick. Um, a note variation here, my husband is actually unable to eat kidney beans and black beans. He can't have them. So I am adding uh, black lentils and aduki beans. I actually think these are a great substitute for kidney beans if you ever are looking for one. They're a little harder to come by. My store sells them, so I buy them. But we're using black lentils and um, aduki beans because of my husband's dietary limitations. And um, on that note, I also think that if you did this in the slow cooker, you could add dry lentils, dry red lentils, and um, extra water to account for those, and it would cook in the chili as well. And you could probably even do that on the stovetop if you want to do lentils. You know, you could add like, I don't know, a cup maybe of dry red lentils plus an extra two cups of broth plus more to thin it later. So that's the what I love about these recipes is it will really work with 
whatever you have on hand or whatever you like or whatever allergy you have because for us you know when you tell people you're vegan and that I'm allergic to broccoli and cauliflower they're like what I know it's tragic and comical or like that my husband can't have um, black beans and kidney beans or whole chickpeas. You can have them mixed up. People are like, what do you eat? And it's like, but plenty. And recipes always work for us. I just make these like little easy substitutions. It's really fun. Um, all right. So I've mixed this around. I just sort of mixed it a little bit just to kind of get the spices to coat everything super well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my tomatoes. And I'm going to add in a little bit more water since it's a pressure cooker and it needs that water for the pressure and the steam, which by water I mean more vegetable broth. So I'm going to add about another half, about a fourth a cup, third a cup, something like that. It's not an exact science. Um, and then I'm going to add my tomatoes and I'm going to pressure cook it on high for one minute and see where we are. And while it's pressure cooking, I'm going to talk to you guys and answer any questions you have because I'm hanging out anyway. Normally at that point while I was pressure cooking, I would go and put my makeup on and change my clothes, but... I'm not going to do that on camera. Um, right. Back to my tomatoes. Yes, hi, Mateus. He's so excited about this chili. Hi, buddy. And I'm just dumping them straight in. I bought these on sale. I really like them. I, I'm sure you, I don't know if you've seen my previous videos and how I used to like fight my can opener all the time. So I have a new can opener now. We're not in love, but we like each other a lot more. All right. And it's actually a really handy little guy. I'll show it to you in a second. I had bought it for camping and then ended up liking it more than the other one I had. It's this. This is the whole can opener. Um, who makes this? Joseph Joseph. I like I like his stuff. I hope it's a him. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I think I got it on like an Amazon Prime deal. Okay, so everything's in there. Ah. Time to see if I was right. I'm a little nervous. Actually, I'm not at all. Okay, so you come towards me. I'm just gonna do another quick stir. And then let me make sure I got everything. Everything but my beans. So, all right. Okay, I'm putting it on two minutes high and I'm going to do a quick release. Normally with stuff like this, uh, I would do one minute and then I would just let it release naturally because what, what I would do normally is, yes, hi Tay Tay, he's, look at this. Can you guys see? Um, normally what I would do is I'll put it in my pressure cooker at a lower amount of time. Like for the chili, for example, I would do one minute. And then I would do it naturally because, like I said, I throw it in my pressure cooker and then I go and I do my hair or my makeup or, you know, put my clothes on or I'll walk the dogs again because they the more times they go out, they're old. They have to go out a lot. Um, you know, I'll do that. I'll get my stuff. I'll pack up my lunch. I'll pack up my husband's lunch. Like, I'll just do all those things. And then by the time I'm legitimately ready to leave, it's all done. And it's, you know, I either let the pressure out a little bit or I it's almost always done. And I just check to make sure that it's okay. And then I just take it like, um, the, the little inner container and I put a top on it and I stick it in the fridge. And then when I come home, I take it out, I put it back in it and I let it just go on the warm setting. And usually by the time I come home, I'm like, let me throw in a lot, a load of laundry. Let me walk the dogs. Let me like get, put my stuff on the table. Like by the time I've done all that, it's warm and it's ready to eat. And so it's a really nice way, if you don't want to cook ahead on the weekend, this is a really great hack. And especially this time of year when we're making a lot of soups and chilies, this is really, really, really helpful. I could safely leave it warming all day long, but the, the thing with that is, is you're gonna have to add extra liquid before you go, otherwise it'll be dried out when you get home. Um, and for me, I just don't like wasting the electricity. I don't want it on all day long, and I'm also super, super paranoid about leaving anything plugged in. Like I unplug 
everything. Everything gets unplugged before I leave the house. I'm just like super traumatized about fire. Um, when I was a kid, there was a house that burned down in my neighborhood and my school burned down. And so I think I'm a little extra hyper vigilant about that. So that's just me. Um, I did hear a couple of you guys pop up and ask questions. And now I'm trying to find the question screen. I think this is it. No, that's... Oh, okay. These are comments about the cumin stuff. Um, oh, Sarah said she's doing the same thing too. That's awesome. Um, I love that we were cooking the sweet potato chili at the same time together. That's so cool. Um, and Sue said that she'll be back on the meal plans in January. Yay! And congratulations on the raise. That's incredible news. Good job. I'm sure it was very, very deserved. Um, Sarah said that in addition to making the sweet potato chili, she also made the lasagna. Wow, you are rocking it this morning. Good job, girl. Um, oh, so Carolyn wrote about the cumin, and it said, according to Cambridge Dictionary, in the UK, they say Q... Um, cumin, and in the U.S. they say coo, as in cumin. Fascinating. I think I'm going to go with the U.K. one. I like to pick up the way they say things in other languages and adopt them into my my accent, repertoire, vocabulary, pronunciation. I'm not sure. So it's just chilling. It's just doing its thing. Fun times around. I can actually use this time to clean up a little bit of the mess I made. It's really not very messy. It's like that's the whole mess. These are still my two cans of beans that I need. These are my scraps that I'm going to use later for my little, I should, guess I should take the sticker out. I just save all my scraps in the freezer until I have like a big bag of them. And then once I have a big bag, I make broth. And then I compost, and then I compost the stuff after I make the broth. Or the pugs eat it. They actually really like the random veggie things. My recycles, more recycles. I hate that they put stickers and everything. I know it's necessary for the, the people working at registers, and I'm so thankful they work and they do that job for us. But I always feel like, why is there a sticker? I pay this money for organic, and now I have this like gluey sticker on it. But first world problems. Um, let's see. Put my spices away. Oh, you guys can see my spice drawer. I know that's a that's a that's a fan favorite. So here's my spice drawer. I'm telling you, man, a drawer makes all the difference in the world. Spice drawer. It's there is a method to this. It's not alphabetical. The way I do my spice drawer. Let's see if you can see more. The way I do my spice drawer is. There we go. Um, garlic and onions over here because I use it the most. This is too big to fit in the normal side. But the methods to all this is I have. You can't see it. It's I don't think it's in screen. But like I keep all my salt and pepper the farthest. And so basically what it is is the closer it is to my stove because my stove is well I guess it's like that way on the video. Um, whatever's closest to my stove. So stove is here. So this is the stuff that's closest, and then over here is the furthest. But basically what I do is everything that's closest to the stove is what I use the most. Oh, you can see there's actually light outside now. Yay! The sun is coming up. Um, that was dark when we started. So for me, whatever is closest to the stove, it's all the stuff that I use the most. So everything that I use predominantly in my recipes, which... I use the meal mentor recipes. If you don't, you may have a different one. But all my stuff, like Italian seasoning, chili powder, cumin, thyme, oregano. Um, I use dill a lot just personally because I like it. Um, paprika, smoked paprika, ginger, cinnamon. Everything that's like super used, very popular all the time is the closest to the stove. This way, if I am in the middle of cooking on the stove and I need something and I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot that. It's just, I pull the drawer open and it's right there. It's the first thing at my hand. Um, all the other stuff then is like not used as much and I group it together. So all of my baking spices, like cinnamon, nutmeg, pumpkin pie spice, I have them all in a row together because if I'm baking, I know, okay, just pull that row. Um, and it's sort of like the same I said on the other side, all of my like salt, like I have a salt substitute for someone who um, can't have regular salt. I have regular salt. And then I also have all of those like Mrs. Dash's salt free things. They're all at the far end because the only time I ever need them is like when I'm actually serving. And so then I come and it's at the far end and it's nice in a way. That's just what works for me. 
Um, I love it. This is my favorite system. It makes cooking a thousand times easier. I realized one of the reasons I didn't like cooking was that it was stressful that I couldn't find stuff and I didn't know where it was. But really kind of giving everything a place helped a lot for me, um, especially in those early days when I was just super overwhelmed at cooking for myself and having to cook for myself all the time. Um, if you don't know my story, my husband and I, our jobs transferred us to the Caribbean where we had to cook three meals a day every single day because there just really wasn't restaurants. And also the grocery stores weren't always open. Um, they were not open every day. They weren't always open for long hours. A lot of times shipments didn't come in because it was an island. And so if there was any kind of weather anywhere, we didn't get stuff. And so our grocery stores would literally be empty for weeks. And there wasn't Amazon Prime or anything like that. Um, and so I, I had to like really make it work all the time. There was no backup. There was no Chipotle. There was no, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to order something. I'm gonna, no, I had to do it. And the way I saved that sanity was having all these really good organization tactics. So I'm really glad for that experience. Um, I still have a pug at my feet. My pressure cooker just got to pressure. It might be faster for you. Like I said, I live at a really, really, really high altitude. And so things take a little bit longer for me. Um... Buddy, I love this dog. We rescued him about a year ago. He just got his gotcha day was like two weeks ago. So we've had him for about a year. Um, we adopted him as a senior. We think he's 15 or 16 and he is obsessed with me. I keep trying to read him books on codependency, but it's not doing anything. It's okay. I, I like the love. Oh, whoops. Tay Tay, show everybody how, how, yeah. As long as he's got me, he's a happy boy. Come here. Yeah. I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this, but you're worth it. Say hi to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, don't try. No, you're just so uninterested in the camera. I know, I know. Who's my sweet baby? You want? I think there's a little piece of bell pepper. You want it? It's not the good part. You want it? See? See what I mean? Did you, you, you swallowed it already? Okay, well, all right, I got a little bit more. You want a little bit more? See, he's looking. You want it? He also is a, equally as uh, excited about kale stems and collard stems, which my two black pugs, I don't know where they are. They're not interested in the camera. Um, they're, they all love it. They pull it out of the trash. And I was like, well, we know you guys were raised by vegans, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> Pamela says, I'm dangerous with a mug of tea at 7 a.m. I couldn't handle a pressure cooker. But electric ones are super safe, so it's totally fine. And I actually do have my tea, although I think it's probably not. It's still pretty warm, so. Isn't this gorgeous? I got this for a dollar at Ikea. I just, I couldn't pass it up. I was like, this is the best. I love this color. It's my favorite color. Um, oh, here's, do you want your tea, your tea? Oh, no, we don't get our tea fortune because my pressure cooker is ready for me. Alrighty. So I'm gonna pull this way out because I don't want it to damage my cabinets because my landlords would not like that. Safe. I know a lot of people are scared, but really, it's okay. It's like a facial.
I think we're almost done. Okay, so the pressure is still releasing. Um, but my tea, our little tea fortune of the day is let your heart speak to other hearts. Oh, I like that one. Okay, it's really taking a long time. I usually, like I said, I'm usually like putting in a load of laundry, getting my outfit together, packing up my stuff for the day, walking the dogs for the 10,000th time. Um, so funny thing is, you know, a lot of people talk about how they go plant-based or vegan and they go off their medications or we, we've seen people who are a lot older who are on no medications because they've been plant-based or mostly plant-based all their life. And I feel like such a fraud now because I have all these medications for my old dogs, <laughs> but it's all just like stuff for like their arthritis and everything. But I'm just like, oh, well, so when people come to my house and they see all these pill bottles, I'm like, they're not mine. They're not mine. I swear. Plants are healthy. Um, but you know, especially Tay, when we got him, he, like I said, he was a senior dog and he had been on the streets for months, like living in a trash can and he had a lot of skin infections and he had a lot of stuff going on. So he's still in his rehab, I guess. We're still putting weight on him, but he's done a lot, a lot better in the year. So, Ooh, it's done. It's done. Yay! So now I know if I work this out or not. Oh, I'm feeling really confident. There's my chili. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if my potatoes are done. And if they're done, cool. I'll just like leave it and this will be dinner later. Um, if my potatoes aren't done, I'll just let it warm for a little bit while I go get ready. And that's what you could do. If you ever do pressure cook something, and it's always better to do less because you can't undo the cooking. But if you do it less and it's not enough, if your stuff still isn't cooked enough, for my pressure cooker, I have a simmer setting, and so I can simmer it. I have like a warm, slow cook setting, so I could do that. That takes longer. Um, I could do it again for another minute if I wanted, but that's usually too much. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I'm just going to let it simmer. It, I don't know if it's okay. I think it is. But if it's not, I'll just let it simmer until it is as tender, until the vegetables are as cooked as I want, and then it's perfect. Or even if I'm out of time, because this happens sometimes, I'm out of time, that's okay because I know when I warm it tonight, I can just warm it and cook it a little bit longer to finish it up. It's not a big deal. Or in the case of my husband, sometimes he asks me to undercook things, like he wants his potatoes or whatever to be just barely al dente because he knows he's going to microwave it at work for lunch. And so because he's going to microwave it for like two or three minutes, he wants them to be cooked and not mush. And so that's also another option for you. Um, actually, we do that. So that's actually a great tip. So in a lot of the recipes, like the goddess bowls, for example, we use frozen broccoli florets. I actually don't even cook those anymore. I just put the frozen broccoli florets in the little container with the rest of the stuff because I know when my husband goes to microwave it, the broccoli florets will cook because he used to complain that they got like too mushy and too soggy. But now one last step, don't even have to pre-cook the frozen broccoli. Just put the frozen broccoli florets in the little thing and then it thaws in the refrigerator and when he microwaves it, it's cooked to perfection. It's like could it get easier? Um, anyway, so checking my potato, and they're perfect. Look at that. You can see how it just goes through perfectly. It's so perfect. Oh, I want to eat this, but I'm going to save it. So it worked. So there you go, guys. If you want to pressure cook the sweet potato chili, you totally can. It worked so good. The other thing, too, with chilies in general and also um, pressure cooking them, if it seems too dry, you can always thin it out with water. Um, if it's too acidic, add a score to ketchup because sometimes that shortened simmer doesn't get all the acid out of the canned tomatoes. A little bit of ketchup, no biggie, works fine. Um, this recipe also, like I said, I got to dump my beans and lentils in. And the way I do it is I divide the chili up into four containers and then I put lentils into and the beans into because I want the lentils and he wants the beans. It works great. But you can just dump it in here too. Um, again, who do you? I am going to try this with the red lentils, I think, next. I think that's going to be amazing. I really like that. Might be a new meal. Um, yeah, you can thin it out. Totally fine. Um, I think a can of green diced chilies would be amazing in this. I think adobo chilies would also be amazing in this if you want a fiery chili. Um, even red pepper flakes while cooking would be great, but yeah. Anyway, it was so fun cooking with you guys this morning. I hope this was inspiring. And um, like I said, this recipe is on the Meal Mentor app. You can do a free trial. Check it out. It's super fun. And yeah, it's on the plan this week. And it's great. It's great for this time of year. It's great when we're running around trying to do 10,000 things on top of our normal 10,000 things. So, um, oh, yes, Sarah, it was so lovely cooking for you. I love knowing that you and I were cooking this together. I feel like so many little bubbles and warms in my heart knowing that was happening. It's so good. Oh, I love it.
I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Jennifer said, do you add the lentils and beans when you warm it up later? You could do that. I don't want to. I'm just going to do it all now. And then when I warm them up, I'll warm them up. But you could just add them at the time of serving. That's not a problem. Um, I just want to get it done. <laughs> I want it to be when it's time to eat. All I have to do is heat it. Um, but that's me. That's my preference. I know a lot of people get nervous about canned beans being open too long. So if you're making this and not planning to eat it six days from now, you could just add the beans at that time. Because I know canned beans can be funny if they've been open too long. So something to consider. Um, oh, another thing is if you want a really thick chili, like really thick, like the, the, the water part, not like, you know, like instead of being watery, brothy, if you want it thick, um, use the bean liquid from your can or part of it. So it's a little secret there. So, all right guys, it was amazing spending the morning with you. I'm so excited to eat this. I will take a final picture and post it at some point and, um, have an amazing day or don't, you know, you do you, whatever you like. Love you guys.